Perfect. Good, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our Eastern Tennis Conference. Uh, this session, Swing into the Future with Net Generation app, features a very special host. We, we have um, Senior Director of Education, Training, and Resources at, at USTAU, Craig Johns. Uh, welcome, Craig. Uh, how are you? I'm good. I had a ghost in my machine, and hopefully it, the ghost is out of there, but doing well. Thank you. Perfect. Uh, Craig is an uh, expert on the Net Generation app, coaching education pathway. So he's going to show you guys how to take care of, take advantage of this amazing tool that we have. Uh, so with that, I will turn it off over to Craig. Great. Can you hear me, Gustavo? We can hear you. Perfect. All right. Excellent. Sorry, everybody. I had a couple of uh issues and some technical difficulty and I'm going to try to work also off of my uh, um, my iPad real quick. Yeah, so let me uh, make sure I'm going to share my screen real quick. All right, are we good? Can you see it? Yeah. Yes. Excellent. So yeah, I work in coach education and it's been an interesting journey, um, uh, especially uh, with the uh, the Net Generation app. Um, we spent a ton of time on this, and I don't know if Alana Broderick's in the call or not. She said she was going to uh, try to call in, but uh, this uh, was a definitely a collaboration. Alana was in our department in junior play. I switched to USTAU for coach ed, and Alana actually went to digital, and we got really, really lucky because as I switched to coach ed, she and I had been working together, and then we got to spend a couple years on this project. So essentially, what happened was. Uh, we had three divisions of schools, community, and then coaches, and coaches as certified coaches. And so we started talking about an app. It was something that Craig Morris charged us with from the very beginning, that this is what we want you to do. And uh, one thing led to another, um, and uh, Alana was the one kind of steering the IT side. And we just kept coming up with all these different things, and Alana would say, hey, it can do this, it can do that. So it's just really interesting uh, how this has evolved. So I haven't presented on this in a little while. And it was really cool going back in and looking at the history of it. I'm gonna share all of this with you, but we actually think it's probably the most underutilized resource that's out there. Uh, and we're gonna talk more and more about the features, but it's something that as we say, you can use 20%, you can use 90% of it, doesn't matter. So I, I'm, when I say I'm excited to be here, I'm thrilled to be here to talk about this because this has been a, uh, not to be selfish, but a really big part of my life, Alana's life. And um, we feel like there's just not enough tennis pros that know about it. So we're gonna go over our plan, sort of our updated plan, which is really about certification and how this is gonna fit into it as well. And I think you'll see that uh, essentially every certified pro in the future that's a certified professional is gonna have to be um, able to use the app and, 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 and deal with it. So I wanna talk about this to start with and I'm not quite there yet. So what we might wanna do is somebody from the staff can read it out, but I wanted to ask you if you could put in the chat because I can't see it when I'm presenting the PowerPoint, but your pain point, and I work with Chris Michalowski, who's brilliant in the area of, um, you know, in his prior life, he, he did a lot of the same things that uh, Essential Tennis and Fuzzy Yellow Balls do and, and the whole marketing thing behind it. But he always talks about your pain point and, and kind of, building up the need to be on this webinar and the need to get the app. And so I wanted uh, to see if, if some of you could uh, chime in about working with junior points, uh, uh, junior players, what's your pain point? You know, what do you struggle with? What would really help you? Um, if you've never heard of this net generation app, some of the, the, the areas you, you struggle in and, and also with red, orange, green uh, as well. Um, so if you could chat, that'd be great. And again, Kristen or someone, if, if you want to chime in to what anyone's chatting, what are your pain points in working with junior players? And again, I can't see, is anyone chiming in or do I have crickets? We have a few questions in the chat. Um, oh, one of them go. submitted during registration. It says, how can tennis clubs integrate the use of the app for parents and our young players? 
So we'll call that a pain point that I'm going to address later. So that's good for one. I actually can see the Q&A on my screen, Kristen, but I can't see the chat for some reason. I don't know why. Oh, there we go. It was underneath there. There we go. Have not had a chance to know what it is. Um, from questions submitted during registration, how tennis clubs can integrate the use of app for parents and our young players, which we are gonna go over for sure. Parents could be a pain point. Would we agree on that? Um, trying to keep the kids interested, fun stuff for them. Excellent. We're gonna talk about engagement and making connection. Love it. Use of small enough rackets to accelerate player development. Yeah, real problem too with the high performance uh, rackets. They're not making, they're not making 24s anymore, anymore. And, and getting graphite rackets that are properly balanced. Um, the app won't solve that, but uh, that's something that I can actually talk about, uh, Jason, offline as well. Um, will there still be a website? Is this a phone only app? Yeah, so with these, um, uh, we did get the latest and greatest from Alana that it's in, is in USDA.com. I think we're moving away from um, the net generation side. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna move from this. So I had my own pain points um, and these pain points are probably identified a little bit from you know, questions and dealing with coaches and all is this lack of a developmental pathway is a problem. Like uh, if you've worked with someone really good, but to know what to do from I'm a beginner red baller and how to get them all the way through, we hear that a lot. Uh, pros wing it uh, and, and, and aren't really prepared uh, is another big one. Uh, the other one a bit with, you know, with kids, but also parents and all connecting to them to, to motivate uh, is this whole thing about how do you keep them engaged more than just the lesson itself. Uh, and then, as we mentioned earlier, pain point, I hate to say parents are pain. That's such an easy thing to say. I would say coaches generally don't know what to do with parents and the, the, the coaches are a pain, quite frankly. Uh, we're very fortunate to even have children out there and the parents allow us to even work with them. I have a a little bit of a different attitude about that. But so th this would be the list that I came up with and then trying to look at the solutions. So competencies, which we'll talk about today, which are the foundation of the Net Generation Coaches curriculum. Uh, and, and then from there, you write lesson plans off of it so that you're not winging it and they're all in the plan. Uh, and then progress reports uh, is this ignition, ignition and motivation where it's more than just assessing the kids every couple of months but it could be a daily or every time they're on the court, you can push plans, which will uh, just give me uh, badges and other things to them via the app through their parents, which we'll talk about. And then again, to the parents where you're communicating with the parents on a continual basis via the app. So hopefully we'll solve some of these pain points. So now that we talked about that a little bit, uh, today's agenda is gonna overview the app features. Uh, and then take specifically take a look specifically at the coaching tools, which I'll explain again, the different categories of things come in. And then we're gonna talk about level two certification, which is kind of hot off the press. It is actually launching right now, the new level two certification is, and then how that uh, uh, is integrated, the net generation app and net generation in general. So first thing is how the heck do I get access to this thing? So you've gotta be, with so many things, safely certified. Uh, and, and this comes up or, or approved all the time now. And I think everyone on this call or that, that hears this uh, webinar and on recording is we have to be unrelenting about safe play. Nobody gets on court for any sport with an adult who hasn't been background screen and safe play, done deal, don't even need to have this conversation. Uh, and then for the coaching side, we have schools, community, and coaching. Coaching is for certified pros. You have to be a member in good standing with PTA, PTR, paid your dues, and also gone through the education requirements. Your background screen is up to date and your, your safe play is up to date. And then you go to the iOS or the Google Play Store to, to get it. So it's actually a, a little bit easier in some ways to go through it now. Um, so app feature overview, just taking a look um, at... Uh, what all we can do. So again, I mentioned there's the school community and the coaching and the coaching, you must be certified so that you gain access to the curriculum. So we're here a lot of times, well, hey, I can't get access to the coach plans. And it's because you're not officially um, either certified or, or, or not a member in good standing. And you'll also get like sample parts, just really small, like a couple of drills. 
that's why. Um, but in terms of community and school, that's different. You know, you you uh, easier to gain access through those. And again, we have videos, practice plans, and everything. Um, uh, that's all under the Explore. And if you look on the app on the screen, bottom left is Explore. That's where you that's where you start. And so the tools section, really cool. If you look on the right side, build coach plans, but you can also build community plans. Um, and when we say build, where you don't have to use the lesson plan verbatim, where you can actually pick and choose from warm-up activities and skills, and you, you can personalize it. Uh, the quick assess is an assessment that's only for certified coaches. And the whiteboard is also available to anybody who wants to use it like the old, you know, we used to have chalk talk where you'd have the, the board, the coach would pull out their, their little, you know, sheet with a dry erase. You can do it on here. Super cool. Something that's really underutilized. So here you go. So easily animate patterns of play. And I had a demo for this, couldn't get it to, to work um, on my download. But anyway, you set it up and you pull in the ball color, cones, rackets, uh, you know, uh, the students on here. And basically, again, it's just like the basketball coach on a timeout. Um, but you have court surface, hard clay, everything. Um, really, really neat. And then you click it. And the beauty of this is it doesn't have to be the lesson plan. It can be any drill you want to create. And you can save it and also share it with net uh, generation approved coaches. So again, if you're signed up, great, but you need your other coaches uh, and get them certified so they can sign up as well. So connections, this is something about self-determination theory, not to get heavy on you, but it, 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 that's the foundation. One of the, the pieces that, that's, that's the foundation of ADM, the tennis ADM. Uh, is the five C's and, and making connection is such an important piece. And so this is when we get into this ignition and motivation concept that you can do more than just when they're there, that you can communicate with the kids through the parents, through the app and make this connection and motivation. So again, let's put this in here in the chat if you can, how do you connect with parents? So how do you communicate with parents? Do you have a newsletter? You only talk to them on court. Do you actually connect? Whoops, sorry. Um, uh, via other, like in in person meetings, whatever it is, uh, a newsletter, emails that go out, whatever. But let's see if we can get that in the chat. And then uh, I'm trying to hover over here, Kristen, and see. There we go. Hopefully now I can see the chat. How do you communicate with coaches? Yeah, working at a camp where you're not allowed to directly connect parents, how do you relate to parents what they should do, not when going to courts with their children? So, hey, on the camp, you can get the parents to sign up and connect with you through Net Generation. It's all free. And you can give camp reports while they're externally at a boarding camp. That's the beauty of it. Um, thank you, Sonny, on that. And then uh, Jason talks about individual face-to-face -face meetings and a bi-monthly newsletter. That's great. We talk about three forms, and if you can get uh, methods of communication in person, you can do face-to-face -face within groups as well, and then uh, through newsletters. Awesome. Um, uh, texting is USDA Eastern used email newsletter, texting, social media. Yep, thank you, whoever is doing that for USDA Eastern. So yeah, we talk about this in the new certification as well. We list all the different ways in level two, you actually have to conduct a parents meeting uh, as part of your portfolio assignment. So I'm gonna move on from there. We go over a uh, really cool module. Uh, you have downloadable um, agendas, you have PowerPoints, and it goes essentially over how to start a parents pro program uh, to running your first parent program. So again, that's something that the uh, um, certification candidates at level two have to do. And here's Tony Stingley, he's about six foot six. So this girl has great leaping ability here to give a high five to Tony. But yeah, the whole thing is you just talk to the kids, hey, you wanna connect with me, talk to your parents. Here's my coach number. They need your coach number to connect, which we're gonna go through a little bit more here. So again, safe play approved. If I say it once, I'll say it a hundred times. That's the, the key piece for any of this, but for the coaches, safe play approved and to be certified. Um, 
So uh, only sent by parent or player. And we say to everybody, even if they're 13 and above, go through the parent. Don't go to the, don't text kids. Just stay away from that and, and make it really simple. But you have to share the coach code with the parents and players. And it's super easy to do. Um, and that way they go straight to you. So on here, this is a really, really big deal. We spent a lot of time talking about this with subject matter experts. So I am giving badges, improvement uh, badges, what we call technical badges. I'm also assessing your child. And all of a sudden someone is at three different places training with their kid and they have three coaches. And if you go to Coach Craig, he'll give you a lower uh, assessment or higher, whatever. And I want to go to coach Craig because of that, or maybe Alana does it differently. And I'm going to go to Alana. We're trying to get rid of that. So only the primary coach can assess. So we don't get in a battle between programs and all that. So you can only pick one as a parent. You might go to three different drill groups, but you have to find out who's what we refer to as the developmental team leader. So that's a really good thing that protects the, the parents. And we don't get into a war on that. Uh, and then the coach confirms the student and assigns the level. So again, it's just back and forth. They have to approve it. The hand, it's all in the hands of the parents, which it should be. Uh, and then they connect with the coach and, and determine who's going to be the, the primary. Um, progress reports. So we have assigned play at home activities, which is more than just the lesson plans where you can get them to do extra above and beyond what you just did at the, the lesson that day. Uh, assess, as I mentioned, which we're going to do here in a minute. We're actually going to assess some people on video. And then feedback, you can give constructive feedback. We'll show a little bit of that here in a minute. And then badges, which is really, really cool. It's a, it's a form of gamification. And the kids can collect the badges as well. So progress report badges. If you look on there on the right, there are universal. And then there's technical. So... Um, you know, things like independence and all that are character words and all that um, you can give as a community coach. Uh, you can give as a secondary, but only the assessment and the technical can we actually um, give to the players. So again, for a spin master, that's going to be someone who's going to give a technical badge to someone versus something about respect. So again, you'll see in the app, there's a difference between those type of badges. Um, and it's really important, again, that the primary coach, that main person, is able to do the assessment. So here's some progress report feedback. Some of these are, uh, you know, they, they're, they're whatever you want to call it, canned responses, but way to be respectful with your opponent, even when you disagree. We wanted to make sure that we didn't just have a respect badge, that we wanted to have more than just that. So again, great job calling the score in lines loudly and fairly, instead of knows how to call the lines, that these were supposed to be presented in a positive manner. So again, a really big group of people that went through this. And um, we really like how this has turned out um, as compared to saying, you are not competent in this area. Um, you go down the, the route of, of, of being more, more positive in it. So again, we're going to talk about the assessment here in a little bit but just some of the highlights on assessing the level of a player. If you look on the right side of the screen, there's four levels of red, three orange and two green. We even have two yellow um, that are uh, uh, practice and play plans and we have competencies, but we don't have the assessment because uh, the key of the assessment is to move within red and then onto orange and then move within orange to green and then once you go to yellow, the idea is that you're a yellow ball player and that'll be sort of a, a different area. Um, so assessments an ongoing basis. It's, it's every time they come out in, in a coach season. Uh, there's quantitative and qualitative, which I won't get too deep into, but essentially can you hit 10 in a row versus is your racket head up on the backswing? Uh, qualitative is again, more quality and involves a little bit of subjectivity. And this uh, allows the coach to set their own standards uh, for how they want to grade, but we give a lot of guidelines. And then uh, we suggest that you assess three times a year or more, because it takes a little bit. Um, let's say for red three, there's 11 buttons you have to hit. It's not major, but it does take a little bit of time, uh, a, a minimum of three times a year. 
um, for assessment versus every time they come out, you know, you're sending the parents something that's probably too much. Again, this is only for certified coaches and you evaluate using the competencies, but the assessments are based on the competencies, but they're reduced by over 50%. And I'll show you that in a little bit. Um, again, skill level and within red, you have assessment and then suggesting when to move. Say for example, here from orange to green, 85% is the area we're looking for. So again, really careful with our language, total score output. So it's ready for more challenge. 70 to 84% for, uh, 70 to 84% is not failing. It's getting there on the right path. And then it's keep trying. So the idea is everything's presented in a positive light. So someone mentioned parents. And so some of the things again with the parents is these check-ins and keeping track of the activity on checking in on practices and in, in different events. You can get extra credit by doing things. It's really up to the coach. So you, you can see on the screen, add extra credit, add the challenge where you can have some things where you can personalize it. And so that's, if you see on the, in the center that says activity and the other one's badges. So again, that's an activity area. The badges are what you just saw earlier. Um, challenging uh, the kids for unique skill challenges. And then one of the things that's just really, really powerful is a journal. All the better players do it. Uh, and it's something that you can do within the app. Again, so many people don't know all the stuff that's in here. Uh, once you look around, we think you'll be impressed. So I'm gonna pause for a second. That's a lot of information. I can't see the screen, I can't see the people on here, but Kristen, I'm gonna go ahead and open it up to see if there's any questions from anybody right now, um, or we can do the chat, it's fine. E either way, it doesn't matter. If anyone has anything that they wanna type in, have at it. All right, and I am not seeing anything. So I'm gonna move on. Kristen, we okay? Just checking in with you. Yes, yes feel free to move uh, on. We, okay. uh, I just put a question from registration in the chat in case you wanted to address. Okay, cool, thank you. Let me pull that up. Yeah, if I hover long enough, it pops up. So I think I've figured out how to get the access to the chat. Uh, share ideas about getting parents involved using the Net Generation app. So yeah, very similar to what we just did. And I, I love the summer camp question as well. Um, cause that's a really good question if you're at a boarding camp and parents that work and all. So, um, you know, the app is, is that connection tool and as other people mentioned, uh, on here, they host in person, they do a newsletter. Um, but a lot of times you don't have time to call the parents. And a lot of times you may have just the, the dad comes out or the mom comes out and you don't see the other significant, you know, the significant other. Um, this is a way that you can communicate every time they come out. We literally take like 30 seconds. It's so stinking easy to, to push notification, whatever you want to call it. Um, and, and, you know, if you get something once a week, like this is a really big deal, right, to the kids versus the only time you communicate with the parents is generally when things go wrong. Um, and so, again, we don't always see a parent, both parents, whatever the situation is, they may get dropped off. There's no telling. Um, but also, too, we got to make sure that you're not only communicating when things go wrong. Uh, and a parent's meeting is great. You want a parent's meeting. But you also need that one-to-one -one in, in more than just, you know, um, uh, an email. This is uh, like some people call it surprise and delight. It's an integral part of gamification. And so that's just another thing that we offer um, through the app as well. They're not expecting it and they still get something really cool. All right, I'm gonna move on to level two certification. And I, I flipped these, I just discovered this earlier, but um, net generation courses, there are three modules. There's a course, a course and three modules, plural, in the level two certification. I mentioned earlier, this is launching really as we speak. Um, PTR and USPTA have just gotten all the courses, all the brand new courses um, and are ready to go. Um, everybody trained will essentially, that's level two certified, will 
will have training in, in, in net generation. And so the beauty of this is just like adult NTRP is kind of our adult language for competencies. Um, the competencies, the common language is net generation. So it's red three, red two, red one. And as we tell all the co uh, coaches, absolutely call your groups what you want to call them. Red one is kind of boring, uh, but it might be hot shots or future stars or whatever. All you have to do is let the parents know, hey, future stars are for orange three and orange two players. And we will have assessments to show when you've moved up into the second part of the group so that we have a lot of coaches that'll have more than one level of the competencies, but it's again, a common language that you'll have to establish. Um, and we're doing that amongst the pros when they come to the level two workshops, they talk this same language, just like they say that we have a 3-0 ladies team. It'll be, uh, they're an orange two player and we're working on orange one. Um, so they have to create plans with the app. So they first have to use the app, then they have to do customized uh, plans and their plans are based off of assessing players. So they actually assess the players first, find out if it's a private lesson, their level. If it's a group lesson, you shoot for the center and then they have to learn to create plans uh, on the app based on that as well. So at level two, you don't turn your brain off. At level one, I say turn your brain off. Level one certification is about working under somebody that hands you a drill gives you the curriculum. A level two certification is about being able to create your own. And so the big part of, of doing lesson plans is to be able to take a database of drills, have a structure, and then you decide what goes in it. The next step for level two at the end is they need to go beyond just the app and create them themselves. So again, this fits in perfectly to the certification. So I'm gonna skip through this one. Um, actually, you know what, I'm not. I'm gonna come out of this and I'm gonna show this video now. And we're gonna come back to this video again later. So this is what I wanted to do. This is a video we shot for certification. Never met this child in my life. He, they said was a, on, the, on the fast track in terms of he just came out. He hadn't done a whole lot of lessons and all but he actually looks a lot like kids who've taken a lot of lessons. And, and we can discuss that more later, but the biggest issue is how would you evaluate this kid? So you're gonna see, that's me. You'll see, I'm gonna do different things with him. And then here in a minute, we're gonna go into the net generation course on how to assess players and see if we can solve some of these problems. There's no audio. I love this kid too. He starts laughing in the middle of it. Really cool little kid. Just saw him yesterday, actually. He's he's now, I think he's hooked. If you watch what starts happening with his stroke, so you, now you'll see the difference in how I'm feeding him. There's he, the, that laughter we love, but he starts breaking down a little bit as we go. And now I'm rallying with him. And now watch what happens. Totally different, right? During the skill development, and I'm not saying a word to him, but when we're, we're feeding to him, then we go to rally. And then later when he goes to play, which I don't have on this video, you'll see it falls apart. So how on earth do we assess this? Does this kid get to go from orange three to orange two to orange one? Do I move him back down to red? This is part of our dilemma as coaches. So let me go back over here. Okay. So back to my list. I'm going to be selfish. But this is what I talked about at the beginning, sort of these pain points um, from other pros, this lack of a developmental pathway. We have the competencies. So that child should be able to see technical, tactical, physical, mental, all those things in the competencies of that pathway and how we want to get him to the point where we want him to be based on his goals and all the availability, the commitment that you have, how often you get to work with him. Um, we talked about lesson plans, which we need to then develop that. And the progress reports are through the app and the communication with the parents. So again, 
There's my wish list right there. You have competencies or your developmental plan. The lesson plans, what we call practice and play plans, are based on the competencies. You assess the players, just like we do with everything. And they need to communicate that to the parents and players. That's in that generation app. That's your pain points basically resolved. So again, we mentioned competencies, four red, three orange, two green, and two yellow. We have our practice and play plans. Everything's in the app. Every practice and play plan has video attached to it. Not every activity has video, but there are hundreds of videos in there. And then the beauty of this, you can use your desktop, go to usda.com as long as you're signed up. You can have it on your, uh, your mobile phone. You can have it on an app. So again, desktop, laptop, and app is the, the beauty of this and the ability to share by just touching. So here goes back to our, uh, our player earlier. And so I wanted you to see this. I'm gonna highlight this. Oh, I'll have to come back to that, sorry. I'll come back to that in a minute after the, we go to the ELMS, but we wanted to go back to him to see where we thought the player would live. Is he an orange three or an orange two? So I want to go into something different here, which is actually our course, courses. And I wanted to show you what the level two certification goes through. So this is our net generation course. It's a software called Evolve. We create these on our own, save the USTA literally over a million dollars in the last two years. We now essentially have trained staff to be instructional designers. And so this is what you see when you go into Blackboard, the Learning Management Center. And so we have the net generation curriculum. It's an intro to all parts of it, competency, practice and play plan and assessment then using the practice and play plans, and then using the net generation app. So in the key concept area, we talk about integrating it into your own program. And we go uh, with interviews of subject matter experts in the field that are big into this. We have Rita here delivering character on tape, Rita Gladstone. Uh, so anyway, we break down all the lesson plans through all of this. And then I wanted to show you at the bottom that's progression, regression. We talk uh, progression, regression. We're talking about managing time and all. Um, but here's the customize with the Net Generation Coaches app. So they learn to customize because our goal is to create independent thinkers, not people at level two that just regurgitate what's in the app. So this is just really simple how to the do it on your app. The simple steps to create your own lesson plan in the Net Generation app. Open up the app and click on Explore on the bottom left. Select coach on the left side, click on tools on the bottom right side, then click build coach plans. At the top, select my plans, then add new coach plan. Give the plan a title and the date. Now you can work through all the different categories to create your plan according to the level of players in your group. Now click save, then click on the share plan icon to the right of the title. Now enter coach's name or USTA coach number, then hit search. As long as the coach is registered through net generation and has the coach's app, you can share. Congratulations, you have just created a plan and shared it with the coach using the Net Generation app. Yeah, so pretty cool stuff there. That was our own Rita Gladstone, who works at the campus. Rita was interesting. Rita was one of the four main subject matter experts that helped write the coach's curriculum. And three of the four we hired. <laughs> so be careful when you volunteer to work for the USDA. But uh, anyway, Rita runs the family zone here, and she's also heavily involved in coach education. So utilizing Net Generation again is the course. Now I'm going to go to the Net Generation app. I just want to see everybody what 
coaches have to go through to get certified with level two. And just in case anyone's on the call and is certified, all this will be available for continuing education um, for anyone who's currently certified uh, as a teaching pro with the PTR or the USPTA. So we go into all these things. I actually, these uh, you have to click on, and I've already clicked on, sorry, but they, they usually are in red. You click on and, and, it, and you engage with it. So we talk about the assessments. The first thing you have to define, head, feet, and hands, for which is tactical, the movement, and then the, uh, the technical is the hands. And then all the categories over here of game, net, baseline, et cetera. The scoring key, again, everything in red you, you engage with. So we do cognitive associative autonomous for three stages of, this, of, the, uh, of the scoring. And then everything in red you click on. So we also know that you've completed it. So you can see I'm complete there. So that means that I've gone through all this and we know that. Again, another one in red. So this is part of the engagement is quantitative and qualitative. And so we go through here, examples of quantitative and qualitative. Again, everything red, they have to click on to. So again, all the stuff you have to do to learn how to assess what's an open and closed environment, tennis skills versus games. Again, our head, feet, hands, all the way to the bottom where they have to start doing drills and activities and connect the two of these. So what we mean by that is, if I'm looking at the competency, where am I gonna know they're capable of doing it? So card shark, for example, is working on rallying a number of balls, which is consistency right here. And then also the goal is to keep the, goal, the rally going with good footwork, which would be the feet column. So we teach you what drill relates to the, the competency. And as we get all the way to the bottom here, we start talking about actually how to assess. So we go back to, again, head, feet, hands, and all these examples here. This is a lot of stuff. You might be getting dizzy. Uh, but we get down to scoring the assessment, which gets back to the gentleman from earlier. But instead, I'm going to show you some different things here for some younger kids. So the ultimate test is point play. So the child we saw earlier, I wanna see what happens when he's playing. If he's doing it well when he drills, then he saw when he rallied, it got worse. And then when he plays, he's probably not gonna keep the racket head up and things like that, that might be the subject area you're looking at. So here's my video knowledge check. This is what all the coaches have to do. So you will assess each player on a scale of one to three. And the competency is he uses feet to turn shoulder for a square stance. That's actually in, um, or in, uh, excuse me, red three, all right? So let's see what he does. Does he use his feet to turn his shoulder? And I would chat it, but I won't go through all that. And the answer is no, he doesn't turn his shoulder at all and is not using his feet to turn his shoulder. So here's the same child and the competency is a simple low to high swing path. Again, this is, red three level. So is he doing this? Simple low to high swing path. And the answer is yes, it's low to high. Is it pretty? No, but red three, the last time I think most of us checked, is kind of ugly and that's okay. So we're gonna go over here, orange level two, transition, Competency is developing a one-hand backhand volley with non-dominant hand on the throat. This is actually Ola Mamquist's daughter. Ola's in charge of coaching at player development. Yep, so the question is, what stage is she at? So if you noticed on the first one, it was up on the throat. On the second one, it wasn't. And this is also feeding, not even playing. So this particular one, we have the transcript up here. And the answer is number two. So it's still not consistent yet. So I wanted to show that and then come back to my favorite guy right here, my new favorite player. 
And we wanted to take a look at this right here. So this is orange three. So after we've watched him rally and play, keep in mind you have to do more than just drill. Does he rally consistently the center court with depth and increased net height? And if you saw the overall court <clears throat> orange when he rallied with me, he would probably get a three on that because he can rally. Rallies a slice forehand and backhand. That's not what we were working on. So that's in a separate drill. Does he hit with a square stance during rally and developing open stance on wide balls? So if you look at him, he hits a lot with a square. And if he's going wide, he actually opens his stance up on his forehand fairly naturally. Does he perform a crossover step? Does not on wide ball recovery. We didn't see it there. But the big thing we were looking at today was his unit turn with a circular motion, keeping his racket up. And you can see it's not a circular motion when he starts to rally. So that would be in that particular area, no, he would not check off that box. And on the app is where you would do that. And you'd grade him and he adds it up for you. And so I was using this one as an example, just to see the differences from orange three to orange two. If you look at here in the uh, upper right, it says hands and then baseline, if you go all the way across, now it's about consistent grip changes, which he does not have his non-dominant hand on the throat, which is completely inconsistent, developing a consistent contact point in front of the body. It's actually pretty consistent right now. And then it talks about the slice. So we'll ignore that one. And I am gonna go to the chat real quick. So I think something popped up and it may be from, from earlier. Are there assessments done in realistic play or even more live ball open situations? Absolutely, and as you probably saw, <clears throat> I may have breezed through it too quickly. It said in the course, the ultimate test is point play and actually competitive play, right? So what we're trying to bring, uh, really drive home and bring up here is that when you evaluate and you're evaluating someone in a lesson or even a group or a private and you're hand feeding and racket feeding, they should be the best at that because that's a closed environment. Then we went to rallying the ball. That's in between an open and a closed environment. And uh, it really deteriorated. And then when he played, it wasn't happening at all. That particular thing we were looking at. So absolutely, Jason, uh, on that, it needs to be uh, the term you use is realistic play. And, you know, pressure is a good thing, but you have to see it under pressure a little bit. So all good. So I'm gonna stop there and I'm gonna escape and see if I can get back to my Zoom meeting and probably like earlier, Kristen and company, I'm struggling with, uh, yeah, I'll hit the stop share. Perfect. Now I can actually see people. So yeah, I was gonna stop and um, I don't know if people can unmute or anything, um, but we can do whatever you want, Kristen, chat or Q and A. Let's use the Q&A feature. Okay. And I don't know if people are allowed to unmute or not either, but. If they request it, then we can unmute them. Um, but I think for everyone right now, the best feature to use is probably Q&A. Craig, I, ha I have a couple of questions that uh, a yep. couple of coaches wanted me to relay, uh, but uh, they're very relevant. That what you show, where can they find that uh, certification? You mentioned just PTA, PTR. Can you uh, go uh, explain a little bit that part? Yeah, so with the new certification, you have to go through level one before level two. There are people that have already been certified that are actually being moved. We call them legacy coaches that are, are gonna be moved into either level one, two or three. We're going through that process now. So the prior certification had, did have different levels, right? You know, they had instructor and professional PTR, they had professional and elite with USPTA. So we're working through that. But if you were already certified, regardless of your level, um, you'll get access to the Net Generation course, right? And, and they'll be able to access that through the teaching organizations. If you have not been certified, you have to go through level one first. 
So we have workshops coming up in Eastern and all over the country where they have to do a two day workshop. There's a virtual version as well. And then they have to do three courses online plus safe play background screen and all that. That's for level one. Those are for people that are generally Gustavo assisting somebody, but also level two, if you wanna to get to level two, you gotta go through level one. So it can also be people that are currently teaching private lessons, whatever, but it's, it's generally designed level one for working under somebody where they're writing the lesson plans and doing that for you. And you're just basically on court helping and you're, you're gonna deliver it. Level two is when we start adding this net generation course that I just showed to everybody. Level two is when they have to use the app from a standpoint of creating drills and assessing players. Uh, level two is really what we refer to as the old certified teaching professional. No, whoops, not old, like older, like 60 years old, but the, the, the former system, um, uh, we used to call it certified teaching pro. That's now called a level two teaching professional. Um, that's where the net generation courses are. So again, they'll, if you're already certified, you'll start seeing some information about that coming out really soon where you can access that course. Unfortunately, Gustavo, we don't allow non-certified to do it because it is at a higher level. And some of that is, it's, it's a bit of an overload, um, uh, but there, there are community, I believe they have a 30 minute that they have that's on the learning management system for, for community coaches. All right, so we got some chat coming in here. Uh, and Craig, what, just one more, uh, for, for those new coaches, right, that are interesting, yep. interested in starting the certification pathway, what is the first step? Where do they go to, to start registration? PTR website, is PTA website, or is there another website uh, or route do you rec that you recommend? You can do two things. You can go straight to USPTA and PTR and find out where the workshops are. Again, the workshop can be virtual or in person. <clears throat> Another way you can do it is when Eastern conducts workshops, which are coming to a theater near you. We're just now um, post COVID going to start doing these. We're going to be doing these uh, around the sections. The USTA is with dual certified USPTA and, and, and PTR coach developers. Anybody currently teaching tennis can actually go to that in-person workshop, okay? They can go to that and then decide if they wanna get certified. And if they decide they wanna get certified, then they can contact the cert orgs. So again, you can start with the cert orgs if you know you wanna get certified, but you can also put your toe in the water at a level one workshop in the Eastern or New England section, whatever is closest to you. Uh, and then if you decide after that to get certified, then you'd go to the cert orgs, if, they, if that makes sense. Yeah, that's great. Great information. All right, I've got some here. Is our desktop app for this to use as a trial basis? So on your desktop computer, you can go to usda.com. I actually went on. Maybe I am automatically logged in, but I was actually able to access the practice and play plans. But I think you have to be safe play screened. I think I was getting on because it recognized me. But it was, uh, this is from Sam, it was through Net Generation. It's now through usda.com. So again, you can access it online. The app, is what you'd use on your phone or a tablet. Um, and again, you have to be a certified pro and <clears throat> go through safe play. And so Jeffrey asked, I think uh, kind of similar, I'm having trouble signing onto the NetGen app, but it's because it was originally set up under an old email. Um, I would contact USDA Eastern. It may need to be escalated up to USDA National uh, and they can check on the email that's used. Gustavo, I'm not sure, Kristen, who they need to at Eastern contact about that. Yeah, because I think that may come down to the email that's related to their account with SafePlay. So you guys might want to answer that. Can as a volunteer coach use this? Players have coached over the years have now reached a certain level of five plus ratings. Can I use this? Um, <clears throat> so on, in, Sam, in terms of the coaches piece, got to be certified. The community, no, don't have to be certified. You just sign up and get safe play. Uh, but, uh, you know, one of the things we want to do is promote certification. We want to promote certification to parents. Um, and whatever's happened in the past, happened in the past, but we're interested in raising standards. So our certifications, level one, two, are going to be more at ITF standards. Quite frankly, our standards are the lowest of any country in the developed uh, develop nation in the world. That's a fact, not my opinion. And that's one of the reasons we're the accrediting organization. So 
I hear it from some people where they didn't feel like there was value and that value we're trying to create. Part of that value is the access to the app, the full-blown app for coaches, uh, because we don't want people assessing that don't have training and don't have a background in it. So again, uh, once you're certified, you get access to this app. And then level two certification, you actually have to show that you can use the app that's part of the certification. So I, I hope that makes sense. But as a volunteer coach, if you're a volunteer coach and you do go to the workshop and you get the level one certification, you will gain access to the app. All right, from registration, how will net generation enhance the player coach experience going forward? Hopefully we've answered that um, on so many levels, right? The developmental pathway, understanding where we wanna get the kid in the video, you know, what, what his goals are gonna be based on those competencies, having lesson plans that will enhance that experience to your question, um, where he's gonna be put at, a, at an appropriate challenge level. So he can push to get better, come back and progress regress with a, with a qualified uh, coach. Um, the experience hopefully is gonna be, as we talked about this connection piece, that not only I assess the level, but I can also give badges to motivate uh, on a daily basis. I can do that if I want, uh, or once a week, twice a week when they come out, totally up to the coach. So hopefully we've, we've definitely answered that one. All right, Eastern has answered that. Excellent. I think that was it, Gustavo and Kristen, for answering the questions. Is there anything I missed? I don't think so, Craig. Yeah, I, th I think you covered all the questions. I, I think it, uh, this was super helpful. Uh, Craig, on behalf of Eastern, thank you so much for taking the time. We will be sharing, uh, for those interested in upcoming workshops, once once we have the date, we will, we will share it with everybody. If you're interested, please reach out to us. Uh, but uh, thank you so much, Craig, and uh, anything. Uh, Bravo. Yeah, one thing. Last words? I, I just saw another one here, sorry, from Stephen in the uh, Q&A of okay. so the chat, but it was, I'm Safeway Certified App. It's not showing approved. I am PTR Certified. So that'll be another one, Stephen. Contact USDA Eastern. We'll get down to that. We can escalate it up to national, but there's a lot of things like email addresses and things like that that can get mixed up, but they're all there um, to help you out on, uh, on that. Yeah, correct. Any troubleshooting we could do, uh, reach out to uh, your contact at Eastern and we'll be happy to, to uh, fix it or, or share it with whoever can. Yeah, one more, right? Sorry to interrupt you again, but here's Julie Bliss to the rescue, a link in the chat to the USA Customer Care articles on net generation. So maybe can find it in there as well, but they have an email address. So I, I think USA Eastern would just direct you there anyway. And, and Stephen and others, just so you know, this is a question that comes up all the time because of the safe way, the background screen, changing email addresses. So I think that's the site uh, that you can, can go to. All right, that Gustavo, I think we got it covered, man. That's good, we answered all the questions. Thank you, Craig. Any anything you want to leave the our audience with? Well, uh, again, I, I I hope you you know you got something out of that from a standpoint of 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 why this app is such a really important piece to put into your coaching. If your school's community you have access, the whole enchilada comes when you're certified. So hopefully that motivates people to get certified um, because we we do want to push people towards that that work full time in the business. If you're a volunteer coach or whatever, totally get it. Stay community, stay schools, whatever. But just hopefully those that are on the call that have, you know, are listening in uh, will take full advantage of this. So, yeah, thanks for having me. Thanks, everybody, and, and have a great uh, rest of the afternoon. Thank you, Craig, again. Thank you.